Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus. It's a CR10 size printer with a print volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters. It's a bed slinger with linear rails on the X axis, dual linear rails on the Y axis, and palm wheels on the timing belt synchronized dual Z axis. It has a metal one piece base and two carbon fiber rods to support the tall gantry. The extruder is a dual gear metal extruder. It doesn't come with an auxiliary part cooling fan and mainly uses a turbo blower inside the print head. There is an inductive sensor for auto bed leveling, and as this is the only bed leveling sensor, it doesn't support auto Z offset. There are six leveling knobs underneath the bed, so the leveling is the same as those older Marlin based printers. The claimed top print speed is 500 millimeters per second, and the maximum acceleration is 10k millimeters per second squared. I think it might be achievable for smaller prints, but for larger and taller prints, I guess somewhere between 150 to 200 millimeters per second would be more realistic if you want to get decent print quality on such a large bed slinger. The maximum nozzle temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, and the heated bed can reach up to 100 degrees Celsius. It has a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle installed, and also comes with a spare one. The print surface is a textured PEI spring steel sheet. It runs standard clipper firmware on an MKS Pi motherboard with a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor, 8 gigabytes of eMMC, and 1 gigabyte of RAM, and a pretty standard clipper motherboard configuration. It uses silent stepper drivers and supports sensorless homing. The touchscreen is 4.3 inches and runs their own UI. It doesn't come with an accelerometer, and the input shaper and pressure advance were pre-calibrated in the factory. For other features, it has a filament sensor mount at the top, belt tensioners, two sets of LED lights, a drawer, and it supports USB and local Wi-Fi printing without forcing you to use a third-party cloud service. For the price of $349, the hardware seems pretty good. I would like to thank Artillery for sending us this machine and for sponsoring today's video. With that, let's get started. The machine came with a pretty large box. All parts are protected by laser-cut foam. The build of this machine is just like any regular bed slinger, with a gantry, a base, two carbon fiber rods, a touchscreen, a filament holder with a runout sensor, some tools, and a user manual. I will put the gantry on top of the base and install two carbon fiber rods to reinforce the gantry, then connect the stepper motor cable as well as the ribbon cable to the print head, then the filament sensor and the Z stepper cables. Install the Wi-Fi antenna and the touch screen at the front right. Mount the filament holder on top of the gantry, and we're done. Once it's turned on, it shows a very simple setup wizard, as this machine doesn't use cloud service, doesn't have auto Z offset, and doesn't come with an accelerometer for input shaper calibration. It will simply heat up the bed and guide you through the manual bed corner leveling using a paper to set the Z offset and running a round of 121 points of auto bed leveling. After that, I will load some filament and start our first test print. I will start with the Benchy sample G-code. Before the print starts, the print head will move to the back of the print bed and try to wipe off the filament residue on the nozzle. Okay, the print has started, and it seems my Z offset is set a bit low, but I will just let it print and reach the top speed to check the sound level. It's around 60 decibels as it doesn't come with an auxiliary fan, which normally would be the loudest source of sound on the printer. It took 20 minutes to finish, and the surface quality actually looks pretty good, with only some ringing at the front part of the benchy. The cooling at the front also looks fine. Overall, it's a pretty decent benchy for a larger bed slinger. Let's start with some of our benchmark test prints. First, I will print the honeycomb box to test the retraction of the extruder.
the extruder can print a tiny bit of filament and move to the next spot without issues with just some stringing, so I will let it finish. It took 2 hours and 55 minutes to finish, and the print time is longer than the average standard size bed slinger, which normally takes 2.5 hours, but it's still in line with other large size bed slingers. The result is pretty good. All patterns can be printed without any broken honeycombs, and the retraction is also good with minimal stringing. Compared to machines that get better results, this Sidewinder X4 Plus is still pretty good. Next, I will try the number slider. The purpose of this print is to test the clearance. As you can see, the first layer is still a bit too low, but I can see a tiny gap between the lines, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. The print finishes in 4 hours and 17 minutes, which is also longer than a regular size bed slinger's average of a 3 hour print time. The first layer is still okay, and all tiles can move, not super smoothly, but the part is still playable. Up next, I will try a tolerance test by printing my own simple geometry model. As I previously tried to move the nozzle up a bit for the number sliders, it ended up not sticking well with this model. I set it a bit lower and applied some glue and restarted the print. This time it prints successfully and finishes in 3 hours and 31 minutes. For the square, it can clear all the way from 0.225mm to 0.15mm and gets stuck at 0.125mm, which is just average. The cylinder can clear up to 0.2mm and gets stuck at 0.175mm, which is really unexpected, as the cylinder generally works better than the square due to those squares overshot corners, but we will talk more about this later. Then, I will try a decorative print, the Robo Alpaca from Prusa. The print finishes in 6 hours and 44 minutes, and the surface quality is the best among all mid to large bed slingers, but the printing time is also the slowest, so let's take a look from all four angles and do some comparisons. It's better than the Congro T500 in terms of print quality, as the T500 is an even larger bed slinger with a 500mm cube print volume. When compared to a standard size CR10SE, the print speed of the CR10SE is faster, but the surface quality of the Sidewinder X4 Plus is slightly better. Compared to the K1C, the print speed and the print quality of the K1C are obviously better than a large bed slinger, as it's a core XY box frame. When compared to another large bed slinger, the Elegoo Neptune 4 Max, the Neptune 4 Max is faster, but the surface quality of the side window is better mainly due to its slower print speed. The print speed of the default PLA profile is only set to 150mm per second with a 3000mm per second squared acceleration, and as a result, it prints slower than most other printers, but with a better surface quality. Let's now try some different materials, starting with PETG. 
as the maximum print speed of the PLA profile is 150 millimeters per second, I guess I don't need to slow it down even more for PETG. I will print a pen holder at the same speed as PLA. The print took 4 hours and 8 minutes to finish, which is also slightly slower than the 3.5 hour average print time on smaller bed slingers. The surface quality is good though, and I can't find any issues even when zooming in this close. It's not as clean as the PLA prints, but it's still a good functional print. Then I will print a TPU wallet to test the extrusion. Since this Airy 1 TPU is super easy to print, even a stock Bowden setup can handle it pretty well. The extruder also works well with this TPU and the side and bottom all look good. I have no complaints about this print. Since the maximum nozzle temperature can only reach up to 300 degrees Celsius with just a brass nozzle, it won't be able to print nylon carbon fiber, but I will still try to print a cable holder with polycarbonate. The print just took an hour and the result is okay. The screw holes are overhanging with cooling off, so it's not as nice as PLA with strong cooling, but it's still capable of printing functional parts with polycarbonate with reasonable quality. Finally, I will print a taller trash can and see how this large bed slinger handles taller models. For a new generation clipper machine with a last generation bed leveling system, this kind of first layer is not too bad. As expected, the lower part of the model looks good, but we will wait and see how the top looks. The print took 11 hours and 20 minutes to finish. The result is not too bad, and the lower part actually looks pretty good. However, as the print gets taller, you can see more ringing on the surface, even when printing at a slower speed of 120 millimeters per second. Since this machine only came with a 0.4 millimeter brass nozzle, it may not be ideal for printing a model at this height with such a small diameter nozzle. Okay. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. The x-axis uses linear rails, and the y-axis uses dual linear rails. Its motion system is the same as the Creality CR10SE, but you get a 3 times bigger print volume. 2. The one-piece metal base is heavy, with two extra carbon fiber support rods. The frame is rigid, and the overall build quality of the machine is solid. 3. The small details are great. It has two sets of LEDs, one at the top and one on the print head, and the Bamboo Lab style nozzle cleaning silicon pad at the back of the print bed is also working quite well. 
Four, it's quiet. There's no fan noise and the nozzle temperature is below 50 degrees Celsius. Even the cooling fan inside the base is not spinning when the machine is idle, so there's basically no noise. The noise level when printing is just around 60 decibels. Five, it uses native clipper with Moonraker and Fluid Web interface. Unlike other printers that force you to use their own cloud service, with this machine, you can print with any slicer without sacrificing the network feature. It came with the Skin Prusa slicer, but you can simply export the printer configuration and import it back to the latest Prusa slicer, or use those parameters as reference to set up the profile in other slicers. 6. The pushing force of the extruder is strong. The heatsink is also the largest one I've recently seen on new printers, and as better heat distribution can prevent clogging, I experienced zero nozzle clogs during the entire testing process, which included switching between different filaments such as PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, polycarbonate, and back to PLA. Now for the cons. 1. It lacks an auto-Z offset. It only uses one inductive sensor inside the printhead for bed leveling, and requires you to do the old paper test to manually set the nozzle height as well as level the corners of the bed. For a new machine in 2024, it's a bit outdated. 2. This machine didn't come with an accelerometer, so the input shaper and pressure advanced values are pre-calibrated, and the surface quality is okay, but the results from the tolerance and clearance test are just average. I don't think it's about the pressure advance, as the corners of the square were not overshot, and the tolerance of the square side is even better than the cylinder side. If it came with an accelerometer and allowed users to recalibrate, I believe it could improve. Three. The screen UI is not too bad compared to other self-developed UIs in the market. It has all the features you need, but the confusing part is the Z offset. You can't find the Z offset button directly from the menu, and instead you need to do auto bed leveling. And it will show the set Z offset menu before starting auto bed leveling. Additionally, the Z for zero and Z equals zero buttons are super confusing. Honestly, this printer has nothing super innovative that requires a custom UI, such as using the standard clipper screen would be okay, as it can at least reach a minimum standard and won't confuse users too much. 4. The Z axis homing speed is too fast in my opinion. Generally, we would expect the speed to be set to 4 or 5 on the Z-axis homing, but this machine was set to 20 by default. This may also slightly affect the accuracy of the first layer. 5. It only comes with 0.4mm brass nozzles. As a mid to large printer, it should come with larger diameters like 0.6mm, 0.8mm, or even 1mm nozzles. Moreover, I also can't see any larger diameter or hardened steel nozzles available on their website as of today. In conclusion, for the price of $349, you get a 300x300x400 300x400 CR10 size clipper machine using all linear rails with a sturdy frame and a good extruder, so the hardware itself is worth the price. As it just uses standard clipper firmware, if you have some experience with clipper, you can always fine tune the settings in the config file using the web interface, or you can just log into the Linux OS via SSH and do whatever you want. This is not the most advanced or the best performing 3D printer in the market, but its hardware specs for just $349 do beat every machine in the same class. As a result, I will still include it on my recommendation list and award it the title of the best value budget mid-size 3D printer. If you're interested in this artillery Sidewinder X4 Plus, I put its link and the link to my website, auroratechchannel.com, in the description below. In addition to the recommendation list, my website also monitors prices for over 150 popular 3D printers, laser engravers, and CNC machines, and provides detailed specs for easy comparisons. That's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.